During the Tudor period, there were many executions that occurred across the land, and kings and queens such as Henry VIII, Mary I and Elizabeth I punished criminals in a number of ways. Some of the most serious were hanged, drawn and quartered, and others were beheaded by axe. But it was also a period of time when murder was more common than it is today. One woman, who was executed and burned to the stake for her involvement in murder, was Alice Arden, who in 1551, in Canterbury, Kent, was burned in front of a huge crowd. But what is her story, and what did she do? There were a number of people who conspired to kill Thomas Arden of Faversham, the husband of Alice. Alice married Thomas, and they made their home at Faversham Abbey, which had been dissolved in 1536, following Henry VIII and Cromwell's dissolution of the monasteries. The couple had at least one daughter, named Margaret, and Alice was described as young, tall, and well-favoured of shape and countenance. However, she began to have an affair with a tailor named Richard Mosby. But Alice must have been infatuated with Richard as she began to plan to murder and kill her husband. Thomas was a private gentleman, and he was being cuckloaded by Richard Mosby without any hint of quiet and calm. Alice and Richard continued to sleep with each other, and Thomas had to turn a blind eye, as he was worried with the relations he had with Alice's family. But during this time, Alice began to hate Thomas, and she began to plan to kill him. She made one attempt to murder him by poisoning early on, and she mixed milk and poison together and served it to Thomas for breakfast, but he only ate a spoonful or two, as he complained of the taste and this attempt failed. Poisoning was a very serious offence during the reign of King Henry VIII, as he would boil alive a cook who conspired against John Fisher, the Bishop of Rochester. Alice then wanted to find help to murder her husband, and she found her accomplice in Mr Green, a local man who owned land on the backside of the abbey where they were living. Thomas Arden claimed that the closeness of Green's residence meant he owned that land, and the two were enemies, having come to blows before. However, Alice Arden and Mr Green were not experienced in murder, and they asked someone else to do the killing, and paid a mercenary £10 to kill Thomas Arden. The mercenary was a veteran soldier, known as Black Will, who had committed several robberies, and also had experience killing in France. He was armed with a sword and a buckler and had made his money as a highwayman and Will was then hired for the murder of Thomas Arden. But as mentioned, there were a number of attempts. During one attempt, the two men shadowed Master Arden walking in St Paul's Cathedral, but they could not find the right time or chance to murder him. A second time they waited for him, but could not carve out an opportunity. The pair even met their victim in London and Mr Green wanted to gain access to Arden's accommodation in London. Black Will offered to kill the master and servant, and this scared them. But whilst he was on his way back from London, a failed attempt to ambush Thomas Arden occurred, and he got home safely to Alice, the mastermind of the plot. But Thomas had business with Thomas Sheeney, the Lord Warden of the Clinkports, and his servant to travel to the Isle of Sheppey and met with Sheeney. But the servant came back with a letter, and Alice hid this, and the servant claimed to have lost it. Thomas then decided to travel to the Isle of Sheppey to meet with Sheeney in person, and along the way, Black Will and another highwayman were told by Alice to ambush him in a broom close between Faversham and the ferry. But yet again this failed, as the assassins got lost. But it was then said that the wicked wife then laid a plot for murdering her husband in his own house, she procured the services of Mosby's sister, Cecily Pounder, and two of Arden's domestic servants, Michael Saunderson and Elizabeth Stafford. On a particular day, selected Sunday, Black Will was hidden in a closet at the end of Arden's parlour, and after supper, Arden sat down to play some kind of game with Mosby. Green stood at Arden's back, holding a candle in his hand, to shadow Black Will when he should come out and the other conspirators had their cue. At a given signal in the game, Black Will came out with a napkin in his hand, and suddenly came behind Arden's back, threw the said napkin over his head and face, and strangled him, and forthwith Mosby stepped to him, and stake him with a tailor's great pressing iron, 
upon the skull to the brain, and immediately drew out his dagger, which was grout and broad, and therewith cut the said Arden's throat. So inside of his own house, Thomas Arden was assassinated and killed by Black Will, who stabbed him in the back and then strangled him. Alice herself got in on the action, and she stabbed the body of her husband seven or eight times, and Will then dragged the body into a closet. He was paid eight pounds for the murder, and then finishing the job it was said, The doubly wicked Alice and her companions danced and played over the Virginians and were merry. The noise was to allegedly show the neighbours that a party was happening, and to give the appearance that Thomas was still alive and with friends. Another account of the murder does differ, saying that Mosby struck Thomas with an iron and he was knocked out before Black Will finished him off, stabbing him and stealing his money and rings. Alice then made sure her husband was dead, stabbing him seven or eight times, and then the parlour was cleaned and the blood was wiped away. The murder weapon and the clothes were discarded, and Alice then sent many of her servants out to go and look for her husband. But it's believed that she even got her daughter to dispose of the body of her father, as it was said, they carried it out into a field adjoining to the churchyard and to his own garden wall, though which he went to church. They laid it down about ten paces from the door of that garden. But Alice waited until the next morning to alert people that her husband had gone missing, and they conducted a search, and the body was discovered. It was written that, long rush or two from the parlour floor, there were no carpets in those days, stuck between one of his slippers and his foot. Suspicion began aroused, the house was searched, and it was soon found that Arden had been murdered in his own parlour. Very likely Alice's conduct as a wife had already attracted public attention, for she was at once accused of the murder. Another account stated that Alice ordered her servants to look for him while she wept deeply, and then the local mayor was informed, and following a town-wide search, the body was discovered. Snow was on the ground, but the body was only dressed in a nightgown and slippers, meaning it was unlikely he was in town when he was killed, and the snow had also preserved the footsteps of the people who dumped the body, linking it to the Arden home. Suspicion immediately came to Alice, and she was interrogated by the mayor for the murder of her husband. She denied that she had any involvement. However, the residents of the town searched her house, and found blood of the victim and the knife, and Alice also named her accomplices. Alice and Margaret Arden, mother and daughter, were both arrested, and the servant and maid were sent to prison. Mosby was not there, and he was later arrested. However, Alice Arden was clearly guilty. She was placed on trial for the crime of petty treason, and for this she was sentenced to death. Inside of Canterbury in 1551, shortly after the murder, at the age of 35, Alice Arden was brought in front of a large crowd where she would meet the executioner. She was led to a fire which had been made for her, and she was then tied to the stake. Following the death sentence being read, the fire was then lit, and in front of a huge crowd inside of the city, Alice was executed in one of the most disturbing methods of the Tudor period. Along with her, further executions continued linked to the murder plot, one man, Michael Saunderson, was hanged in chains at Faversham, and the maid was also burnt at the stake. Richard Mosby was hanged at Smithfield, along with his sister, and George Bradshaw was also hanged in chains at Canterbury. The story around Alice Arden and her husband Thomas's murder became a local legend. It was said that it was long said that no grass would grow on the spot where Arden's dead body was found. Some, in accordance with the superstition of the time, attributed this to the murder, whilst others declared that the field he had cruelly taken from a widow woman, who had cursed him most bitterly, even to his face, wishing that all the world might wonder on him, even during Elizabeth I's reign, the events of the murder were dr dramatised, and some historians even link Shakespeare to being one of the possible writers of the play. But Alice Arden is remembered today, for being a woman who murdered her husband while she was openly having an affair. It was a time where divorce wasn't a thing, so she may have believed that murder was one of the only ways out of her marriage. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.